get a load of this car. Right now, we've got a very nice boy from Merthyr, and he's come on to tell us all about what he's been up to with his lovely podcast. It's Carl Griffiths, the Cayman. Hello, Carl. <laughs> ah, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, I believe it is in Australia. Yes, it is good evening. I've been practicing my Welsh accent just a little bit, but it's not very good. I don't mind. Yeah, it uh, it's, it's, it's possible. It got uh, progressively worse towards the end, though, I must say. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. I mean, the only other person I listen to that's got uh, an accent anywhere near as broad as yours is Ellis James. Do you? Do you know them? Ah, anymore? right. Yes, indeed. So, yes, indeed. Quality. <laughs> not, not, not quite as broad as mine, I don't think. No. <laughs> no. Um, so, uh, Carl is the host of The Cayman Show uh, on YouTube and also a podcast. Uh, it's a really great show. I've been catching up with it and, uh, you know, I can't put it down, so to speak. And uh, Carl, tell us about why you decided to go into podcasting, straight vodcasting. Um, well, basically, uh, obviously, it's been a, a testing year and a half, I think, for everyone worldwide. Still somewhat testing for a lot of us right now. Um, but yeah, I was locked up in four walls and a roof. Uh, through no fault of my own on this occasion, I uh, <laughs> uh, locked up in four walls and a roof with just me, myself, and I for company. I needed some human contact. Uh, the only way I was going to get it was via the virtual world. So I decided to buy myself a podcasting microphone, plug it in, and see where it went. So it started off basically just me chatting to my friends because I'm in bands. I'm, I'm musical and that as well. I'm in a band. Um, I was chatting to some of my musical friends on there just about gigs we've cancelled, uh, how excited we were for when this lockdown's finally up so we can get back out there and start doing what we do again. And it, it progressed from there then. Um, I, I started having television personalities on. I had Trevor and Simon first. It was a, a, strictly an audio podcast at first, but they wanted to do it via Zoom with the videos as well. And I thought, all right, let's try it on YouTube. And uh, it's it's pretty much grown from there ever since. And I, although it started in a in a global pandemic, it started in a lockdown. Um, I think now it's safe to say that the Cayman Show is here to stay. Absolutely. And did you feel when you started that you'd you'd be good at it, or you know that you'd like it? Uh, so, yeah, I, so I, I knew it was, so, so you must excuse me today, by the way, guys, all right? I, I got back into the wrestling ring on Saturday and I was yelling and screaming. Then I had a gig with a band on Sunday and I was singing my lungs out, songs which are probably a little too high for me, but I just about make it there. So today, uh, I, uh, it is a bit of a struggle, not as much as yesterday, but a little struggle nonetheless. So uh, that's, that's why I sound like I've eaten a box of chalk. Um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I, I knew it was for me. Um, it's, a, it's something I, I've always thought about doing. I've always been, you know, a, a people person. I've always liked speaking to people. I've always liked listening to people, hearing their stories. It's a bit strange today now to have the the script flipped on me, like if you were if you're with me. So I'm answering your questions rather than you answering mine. So if I do get lost here and turn around and start asking you things, just spin me around, all right? That's fine. But, yeah. No one's ever <laughs> yeah, really very uh, interested in me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought that about myself as well, but perhaps it's the guests I'm having on instead. You know, I yeah. think you're really interested in that. Um. But yeah, I, I knew it was something I, I'd get into. I, I knew it was something I'd, I'd be able to get my teeth stuck into. Um, am I good at it? Uh, I don't know. That's up for people to decide. But people are certainly watching. People are certainly listening. And uh, the following is building up. My subscribers on YouTube uh, are shooting up every day, which is great. Um, people are leaving lovely comments on there. People are suggesting people to have on next, etc. And I've had some you know, semi-high-profile guests on as well, which I think speaks for itself. And to, looking at some of the guests I've had on, and then what, when you go to approach somebody else, when you can say, oh, so-and-so has been on. For example, um, Carol Baskin has been on. Yeah, that's, there's a name that everybody should know. 
Carol Baskin's been on. So I can approach someone else now and say, oh, well, Carol Baskin's been on. And then they're going to think to themselves, oh, well, if, if she's been on, if it's good enough for her, it's good enough for me, surely, you know? So it's not, I know people look at name dropping as, I don't know, perhaps a negative thing sometimes, but it's show business, let's not call Carl. it. No. It's show business. Exactly. It's exactly. entertainment. <laughs> but, it, indeed it is. Indeed. Yeah. Let's, let's not call it name dropping as such. Let's just say it's, yeah. I don't know, passing on somewhat of the reputation of the show and presenting it to your potential next guests. Yeah, fantastic. Um, don't give us like a top three or four, but just give us a taste of something that international uh, listeners might be interested in. In terms of the podcast? Yeah. Uh, can, okay. you, can, you think of, can you think of like three winners that everyone might enjoy? I know I've listened, you know, I listen to lots of podcasts, but I, you know, I, I sort of got to study the Cayman and, you know, <laughs> I listen to sort of about eight on the trot, which is a lot. Yeah. But, That's you know. awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, so I, it's, it'd be tough to, to stop a three or four, to be honest, because I've had some oh, great cool guests on. <laughs> um, I've had Key Marcelo on. He was a lovely gentleman. For those who aren't familiar with Key Marcelo, he's a world-renowned guitarist, one of the best in the world, I would say. He's played for, uh, most, most notably known for his time in Europe, the band Europe. Uh, he was also in a band, Easy Action, a Scandinavian band. Um, um, prior to that, he was in a band called Noise. Uh, some interesting stories with him. Mm. He he actually was was almost in a lawsuit with a band Poison because they basically stole his song because he, he was in a band Easy Action at the time. Um, uh, they then came up with a song, I Want Action. Uh, oh. His song was called We Go Rockin' and it goes, we go rockin', we go rockin' tonight. And then you listen to I Want Action. It goes, I want action, I want action tonight. It's identical. It's the same song with somewhat different words, but Poison in their version, they've even taken the word action from the band Easy Action. I don't know. You know, I'm not suggesting anything. I don't know if it was to rub salt in any wounds or anything, but uh, yeah, he talks about that. He goes into a bit of detail about that as well, where he was, what mindset he was in, even what he was driving and uh, the landmark that he was at when he heard the song on the radio. So that's a good one. Um, there's two comedy presenters over here in the UK as well. They were, they were massive back in the day when I was growing up on Saturday morning television Trev and Simon, I'd highly recommend that one. Uh, they are hilariously them, um, funny. I think I've seen him on the Richard Herring podcast. Yeah. Yes, Ooh. you will have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, the, I think I, I'm I right. Think, yeah. Yeah. He's, they've mm. been on there, but they've been with Richard Herring on a couple of things, I believe, a stage show as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, great guys, hysterical as well. Obviously, the Carol Baskin interview is, is one to watch as well. Um some interesting questions were fired at her there as well. Uh, ob the obvious one I, I did ask as well, somewhat diplomatically, mm. but I, I did ask and she does answer. So it's, it's worth having a look at that one. Um, there's K the spin-off then is Cayman's Crap Quiz. It's me and my wrestling friends and I'm just asking, quizzing them with questions, giving them random topics, just ribbing them basically and just pulling their strings and having a laugh. Uh, it's, it's just a great channel if you're on there. There's playlists on there as well. If, you, if you've got a spare couple of hours, just chuck a playlist on, sit back, grab some popcorn, grab a drink. It is an entertaining show. And the beauty of it, you never know who is coming. You never know what is coming. Uh, it, it's, it's just great fun. And I don't advertise the guests beforehand as such. I just think, great, let people, you know, that's until the interview is done, recorded, and I'm putting it up. That's that's the first anyone's going to hear about it. It's like, right, here we go. Bang! Surprise, here's this guy. And everyone's like, what the hell? How, <laughs> how'd that happen, you know? Cheryl Baker as well. She was a Eurovision Song Contest winner with the band Bucks Fizz in 1981. Um, Cheryl Baker's come on as well. And by the medium of being the host, I managed to score some free backstage passes as well for her gig on an 80s weekend in Skegness. So uh, happy days. <laughs> Very good. Well, look, I like you that you're getting perks and stuff like that. Um, perks of the job, eh? 
We can't go too much further without talking about wrestling. I'll just tell you my little history of wrestling. Um, when I was about 10 years old is when I recall having my last good night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, I, I can relate. De- several decades later, uh, I've, I've watched a lot of stuff and I've heard a lot, a lot of stuff. And one of the things I used to do in my mid-teens was stay up late uh, and the wrestling would come on. It was WWF then. So my big guys were um, Andre the Giant, uh, King Kong Bundy, um, Jimmy mm. Superfly Snooker. I won't keep on going naming all those guys. So you know exactly where I am. Absolutely. Um, so it, it turned into habitual uh, watching, and then all of my friends got into it. And before you know it, we were trying to suplex each other and put each other in wheelchairs. I mean, it didn't it didn't take uh, very long for it to catch on. Then when we went on on a year twelve bonding camp, we decided to have a live wrestling match which i was the loser i was danny O, <laughs> and i was i was just like a faceless guy in a mask yeah and uh budgie smugglers what do you call them you could call uh, them yeah trunks, but, budgie smugglers to. works trunks <laughs> yeah tights whatever you want to call them all 67 kilos of me i say i was at the time <laughs> and the other the other young man he was he was about 85 kilos so he was a lot bigger than i and after 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 i lost that bout i was sort of the um the shine off wrestling uh went off a little bit until um now what was the wwf uh video game that was huge it was massive with all those guys again and uh that that drew me back into it i think in my late teens early 20s and then i've left it behind i think pretty mm. much left wrestling up until now <laughs> so that's <laughs> well, where back. i am with wrestling but um you tell me your history and how, does it mesh into mine at all yeah this um so so you're obviously talking that was 1980s late 80s we were talking from uh yeah, let's that. say let's say 85 to 88 yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah, it. Yeah, from yeah. from those names you said, I would have pinned them down to about. It would have gone about eighty seven, eighty eight. I'd say for those sure. names, yeah, yeah. roughly. Um, so for me, it was about nineteen eighty nine, nineteen ninety that I started watching. So the mm-hmm. names then were obviously you had Ultimate Warrior, Hulk Hogan, yeah. um, so Andre the Giant was still kicking about then, but his his health was deteriorating. His body was starting to break down mm-hmm. a bit. Uh, yeah, so that, that's sort of when I got into it myself. Um, in the schoolyard then, as as for becoming a wrestler or wanting to become a wrestler, in the schoolyard then, we'd be grabbing people behind the sports hall and just doing legitimate pile drivers and everything on them. Thankfully, no necks were broken and everything. Uh, WCW also used to come on then on a Sunday afternoon in the UK. Uh, which was a dangerous thing because there was a field right bes- behind my house and lots of kids would watch WCW and then we'd go to the field and we'd start wrestling there. I lived on uh, Shirley Gardens, a lovely estate, and there's this other guy, Adrian, he lived in St. Andrew's Close or Andrew's Close and he'd come over from the other estate then and he came to join our wrestling the one day. I ended up hooking him as you do at that age when you think everything's 100% legitimate right you're fighting for your life I hooked his head I DDT'd him and he ended up going head first into a rock Ooh. and he was unconscious and bear in mind now we're about 12 years of age um, real scary to be honest with you well, obviously we rest and we're just trying to do what we see on the TV we're not trying to kill each other as such but I thought to myself oh my god I've killed Adrian Thankfully, the guy woke up then all red faced, screaming, crying, and he chased me out of the field. Yeah. Um, I ran out the common courtesy, you know. Anyway, it was like, okay, let's let's give him a win here, you know. So I got out of there. But uh yeah, that was uh my first physical interaction with wrestling. Uh from there, I continued watching. I watched all the way through till about 1994-ish, I want to say. Then I lost it for a couple of years. I remember then it was 1997, the Survivor Series 1997, where, which was obviously famous for the Montreal screw job. Uh, that's where I picked it back up. And from there, I went back in time and filled in the gap, which I'd missed for three or four years. Uh, then I was looking through a magazine one day 
upon looking through this magazine, it was Power Slam Wrestling magazine. Um, I believe it was available in Australia as well. I uh, stopped publishing now. I did have the editor of said magazine on the show as well recently, Finley Martin. Lovely. Uh, but I was looking in the, in the back of the magazine then, there's a, an advert for a, a summer training camp with NWA UK Hammerlock Wrestling. I didn't drive at the time. It's miles and miles away. I live in Wales. This was in Kent, which is just the far side of London, so to speak. Um, so, yeah, I booked my tickets for, for, uh, for the National Express bus to take me to Kent to train. I went there, did the training camp. At the end of that training camp, they said, right, we're going to put you in a rumble. I'm like, really? Yeah, you're in a rumble. It's like, okay, for those who don't know what a rumble is, um, if you just YouTube Royal Rumble, all right, I'll give you an idea. Basically, the, the match starts with two men. Every two minutes, another man enters the ring and it's elimination via over the top rope and both feet touching the floor outside. So I went in there anyway. I was backstage waiting to go in. I was this big, mean Welshman, all right? I was going to portray this anti-English, mean Welshman. I was smacking myself around the head, getting in character, waiting for my music to hit. The countdown came on. 10, 9, 8, 7. I'm rearing to go now. I'm rearing to go behind the curtain, really getting into my zone. 6, 5. Four, three, here I am. Music's about to hit. Two, one, rah, burst through the curtain. And then I hear the music. Now I've had the time of my life. I was absolutely mortified. They pulled a rib on me. They were pranking me. Um, to this day, they say that it wasn't a rib. It wasn't a prank. It was a mistake. But mistakes like that don't happen. I'm sorry. That was a rib. And I just wanted to turn back around and walk backstage with my head in my hands. But, you know, resilience is key. I went to the ring. <laughs> I just played up to the music, just played along with it. I think I might have even been singing it on my way to the ring, just making the most of a bad situation. I slid into the ring, proceeded to get my butt handed to me by whoever was in there. Being the new guy as well, you get the old baptism of fire. They really lay them in. They put you in the corner. They chop the hell out of your chest. Um, I think I lasted about seven minutes, which is quite a long time in wrestling terms. Uh, before, yeah, before a wrestler by the name of Conscience slung me, sent me sailing over the top rope. And uh, yeah, that was my first experience. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically the highlight of, of my introduction to wrestling as a fan, first of all, and then my introduction to wrestling as a wrestler. So did you take up the lifestyle uh, bodybuilding-wise? Initially, initially, I did not. Initially, I, I do a bit. I train, I go to the gym. It was more so cardio and everything. Mm -hmm. um, but eventually the more serious you get into wrestling, the more serious you want to be taken in wrestling It's, I'd say it's 90% how you look 10% mm. how you can perform in the ring. All right? right. People may disagree with me, but I think the look is, is very important. Mm. And somewhat you see wrestlers like, you know, you, you see wrestlers like Batista uh, yeah. wrestlers like that, you know, they look fantastic. They can get by, but they're not the greatest of wrestlers, but it's the look that brings them to the dance. So, yeah, yeah, after a couple of years, I did start lifting heavier, taking supplements, trying to diet a bit as well. I got a bit bigger as well then. Um, but I, I wouldn't say that I was one of those bodybuilder wrestlers per se. You know, I was uh, I was in shape, but, mm. you know, I was I, I was no Hulk Hogan. Because I'd seen a guy, he was a star, and I said, I want a body like, I hope you know this name, Don Morocco. Oh, and yeah, the rock, the original rock, the rock Don Morocco, yeah. Yeah, because I, lo I love to, like, you wouldn't know me to look at me, but, I mean, I've done weightlifting most of my life, but I'm now old. Yeah. <laughs> but, ah, and but, we all. <laughs> yeah. but uh, And I wanted his traps. For some reason, I was in love with his traps in the right sort of way. And so I, I did so much behind the neck press, behind the neck press, and I ended up with these really inordinately large traps. Even my friends would, would tell you at the, at the time. Awesome. And, um, uh, but, of course, 
you know, being a bodybuilder is your entire life. It isn't a lifestyle. It's your, it's your life. It you is know? a life. It's, yeah. not sustain, yeah. it's not sustainable. So, I mean, I drifted in and out of being in shape and, and all that sort of thing. But, um, but yeah, obviously that, your, idea like was to, yeah. your idea was, was to be fit, was to be able to get around, do what you needed to do and put on, on the show and not, uh, you know, say goodbye to all other relationships for the gym. <laughs> that that's it yeah well fitness comes first you know as i found out it was my big comeback match last saturday for the pro wow. wrestling carnage heavyweight championship which by the way oh my <laughs> goodness you did it i, I bagged the belt <laughs> yeah i bagged the belt pro wrestling carnage last saturday first mutation i entered a battle royal first of all which is similar to the rumble but everyone's already in the ring so yeah. the 15 men who were in that match started in the ring all right all together so after eliminating a few, I noticed then, oh, it's just me and a couple of others in here. And it ended up me and this wrestler, Blanche, and over he went. Then I went on to the main event, the fight Dangerous Danny Owens for the Pro Wrestling Carnage Heavyweight Championship belt. Oh, and uh, yeah, fantastic. here it is. But yeah, but my point being, um, I realized how my wrestling cardio had dropped. And I've told a lot of people this, and I've spoke to a lot of people about it. In wrestling, the only way to build on your wrestling cardio is to wrestle. You can't really, there's only so much you can do uh, in the gym, you know. Um, in the wrestling ring, you've got a different kind of cardio because you're shouting, you're performing, you're doing, you're going from naught to 100 miles an hour, then back to naught, then back up to 50, then back up to 100 miles an hour. Short bursts of energy here and there, you know. It's, it's a strange kind of cardio. I think the best thing mm. to do with that would probably be circuit training uh, to, to relate to a, the, the sort of cardio, you know. That makes sense, yes. Yes, you, you, can't, you can't pace it out, uh, mm. but you do need to be able to do what you need to do. And uh, I guess you can skulk off for a little rest for a few seconds if if you're very lucky yeah that's it it's uh, it's it's never a great rest you know it's a they call like uh if someone puts you in a sleep bar or a chokehold or something they call it a rest hold there's, there's not a lot of rest going on you're just trying to suck in a little bit of oxygen and uh, bear in mind you've got the fans all around you the hot air coming out of all those fans as well is heading straight in your direction in a full circle you know uh the lights as well and it's just like yeah it's 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 a warm place the wrestling ring. <laughs> so, Carl, I, I get the feeling that you've always been a bit of a doer. If it's if it's bands, if it's wrestling, it's starting up your own wrestling league now uh, as a broadcaster. Is is that Carl, or would, did you have a quiet time? Uh, I did have a quiet time. Um, I did have a dark time as well. Uh, I don't know if you want me to go into that. It's up to you, mate. I, I'm happy to. Yeah, I actually, uh, so, you know, I'd, I was in the 90s um, so prior to becoming a wrestler, which probably saved me a bit. I was putting a load of shit into my body. Sorry, I swore. Uh, you can bleep that or edit matter. it out. All right. Yeah, Doesn't no matter, worries. Yeah. Um, I was putting a load of crap into my body. Um, I went through some bad times, went through some hard times. And I basically got into a bit of drug abuse. I ended up ODing. I woke up on life support. I went under twice, apparently. And yeah, I just come out of that then. And I thought, right, I need to do something positive to turn this around. So first thing I did was move out of the town that I lived in to get away from temptation. Don't know anybody, can't get anything. Um, I got myself a job then as well after being jobless for the best part of a year then. Um, started working, uh, started wrestling training then as well. And yeah, the rest is history. It sort of turned me around. It brought me out of my shell. Wrestling built up my confidence. Um, it made me realize that I am a tougher human being than I thought I was as well. And yeah, it just... Yeah, so 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 yeah, it's always been in me, but it took a dodgy, dark moment um, so for me to to bring it out to myself and realize what was truly in inside me and inside my heart. You know, sounds like you go with a lot of energy, possibly nervous energy, 
or possibly not. I'm just pro- projecting a little bit. And you need a you need a funnel for that. You need somewhere to put it. Definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. This uh, I've I've always had a lot of energy, um, but I've not always known where to spend that energy. Mm. If you're with me, so back then, in those dark days, as we call them, I'd go to raves and parties and things like that and you know what happens in these raves and parties yeah. you know what's floating around and uh, you know one pill would lead to another pill would lead to another pill you'd take up us and then coming down you need to take downers to come down from the uppers so you're just you're sending your body on this crazy mission which it doesn't know whether it's up whether it's down whether mm. it's somewhere in between and then I ended up taking 302 Valium tablets and for a come down. And yeah, the, the rest was history. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend focusing your energy on the rave scene. God, um, it's, it's something many. 302. Absolutely. Is too many. <laughs> yeah, I did I didn't mean to take that many, but <laughs> there's no excuse. You know, one is too many now, in my opinion, yeah, sure. you know. Um, just it's you know, if the doctor prescribes you something use it for what it's prescribed for and don't abuse it. You know, um, I've learned my lessons, but I've also from those lessons I've learned being able to help other people and steer other people in the right direction. And I've turned the heroin addict around as well in my former job, which I'm proud of doing as well. He done it himself. Right. But I just gave him some of my experiences and I just showed him the right path, you know? So, uh, um, I think I might have lost your question. You drifted no, right. a little. I'm not sure I really had one. Um, no, I'm just listening here and, and saying, you know, uh, you know, maybe, you know, drug addicts don't want to take drugs. Uh, you know, they want something different. And um, definitely, definitely. Re- and I and I think there's rehabilitation there's, is the key. Yeah, I think however they present themselves as well, and they can present themselves to you as the complete scum of the earth. All right. I yeah. think if you scratch in past the surface enough, nine times out of ten, you'll find a good person there who's just crying out for help, you know? Yeah, absolutely. It's just getting in there and getting beyond that initial presentation of them. Good. Well, let's talk about music. I know very little about your music career or, or what you're into, so I'm really, because I'm a musician too, so I'm really keen to hear uh, what you've been up to all these many years. <laughs> Excellent stuff. All right. Well, one of my early bands... Um, it was a band called Plasticine. Um, if anyone wants to look, we've got some music videos up on YouTube. Plasticine is spelled plaster and then scene as in scene one, S-C-E-N-E. Uh, cool. Yeah, as in we're plastering the scene with our music. Yeah, sure. So we were a four-piece band. Uh, we've been described as a cross between The Clash and The Red Hot Chili Peppers. So <laughs> that's, that's our style. It's an originals band. I'd write all the songs myself. And when I write songs, I try and write songs that don't just rhyme, but they've got a meaning, you know, that they mean things to me. So I wrote this one called Existing Statistics. <laughs> and basically, it goes, wake up every morning, just running in the same old race. The alarm clock chimes and it's up for work again. I hit the snooze 10 times and it's up, I rise, get dressed and wander to the same old place, so on and so forth. It's, it's just about routine. And in the chorus, then it's just saying, I don't want to be another statistic, basically. So, uh, yeah, it's just about wanting to do a little bit more than just exist. And there's a video for that as well. And I mean, as if you look on there, Existing Statistics by Plasticine, uh, the video for it has got me in a straight jacket throughout the video. And we're running through all these different towns as well. We're in like Brecon, which is uh, a tourist attraction in Wales here. Uh, we're back in my hometown of Merthyr then. We're up on the mountain then as well. But I've got this straight jacket on throughout the video. And that's just representing the whole the society has on you and just existing. You're just stuck in this straight jacket the society often has on you. And in the end, we rip the straight jacket off and we're free. And there's a big sigh of relief. It's great. But yeah, that was plasticine. We managed to play in front of a, an outdoor crowd of 15,000 people as well, which was, uh, was a good gig. Um, we almost got signed. But, you know, things happened there or things didn't happen there in the end. There's a lot of a lot of BS in the music scene and there's a lot of people in other people's years and a lot of politics, as I'm saying sure you know. Saying, you know, saying you almost got signed is, you might as well say, and we were never close to getting signed. Like, yeah, unless you're yeah, signed, you're exactly. signed. You know? it's like, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we, we, we were yeah. in talks. 
we were in talks then and they'd given a lot of false promise, shall we say. Um, but I said, so, you mean? know, we're not going to name names. No, hey? why? No, why? <laughs> What a shame but uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's that's plasticine. Yeah. From there, I started doing covers bands as well. Then, so at the moment now, I'm in a band called The Breakfast Club. Um, if anyone's seen the movie The Breakfast Club, that's where the name comes from. Uh, an '80s movie. We're an '80s tribute band. We're a five piece. Um, we're sounding great at the moment. Again, I got to be honest. Without blowing my own trumpet, we are sounding great as a unit. We're a tight band. We know what each other is going to do next. We've been together for five years. We had our first proper gig back on Saturday since COVID, mm. uh, which is why I'm a little raspy today. Sure. And yeah, it's it's going well. Also, during the pandemic, I did pick up the guitar again myself, and I started writing a few songs, a few comedy bits. I wrote one called Panic Buyers, which is just basically listing a shopping list of things which I can't get. Um, there's some colorful language in there as well. It's up on YouTube. Um, yeah, just pretty much before I started the podcast, I would just went through days of songwriting and just writing my songs, sticking them up on videos for people to see. Um, people were commenting and relating to how I was feeling. So yeah, that's, that's my music in a nutshell, really. It's, uh, you, it's just, have you had uh, trouble like, I'm not not going to say you're hard to employ or unemployable, but how have you managed to weave a career? And you don't have to tell us what your career is or out of everything else that you've been doing in your life. Um, so I have been known to spread myself a little too thin sometimes, right? <laughs> and because of it, I've uh, this had implications on relationships. I've had to miss family dues. Um, it's, it, it's tricky sometimes, you know, so I'm trying now to rein it in a little bit. Obviously, I'm working a full time job. I'm podcasting, stroke YouTubing. Um, I've got a lovely girlfriend who I like to spend a lot of time with. I've got the wrestling, which has just started up again. Now the band has just started up again now. So it is a little tricky uh, to mm. juggle all these things and wear all these hats at once. So I'm trying to rein certain things in and just say, right, I'm just going to do this gig here, that gig there, I'll wrestle here, I'll wrestle there, rather than do them all over the place like I used to. Um, it is a balancing act. It's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not out of my control, but, you know, I have to be respectful that I've got other things on and other people in my life as well. And, yeah, it's just, it's just about give and take, really, I think. We can't make everyone happy, but just make the important people happy. And that's be, what it's all about. Be, you'll be a lot happier. Definitely, man. Definitely. <laughs> all right. Look, Carl Griffiths has been chatting all about, you know, his life. And it's been really, really interesting. The Cayman Show is the show that you want to listen and to and watch. What's the channel called, Carl? Um, it's called The Cayman Show. Cayman obviously spent, spelt C-A-I-M-A-N, like the crocodilian. So it's called The Cayman Show. It's up on YouTube. We're also up on pretty much all of the audio platforms as well. So if you do go on the YouTube, however, if you would give a subscribe and leave a little comment on there, let me know you subscribed as well. That would be awesome. I'm trying to build a bit of a community up on there. I will reply to everybody as well uh, when I do get round to it. Um, yeah, just uh, give it a blast, guys. It's entertaining, it's fun, it's not too serious, and you never know who is going to pop up or what is going to pop up on there. What's your favorite social media if people want to get in touch? Um, if people want to get in touch, I'm at, I'm on all of them to be honest with you. Mm. Um, but but the, the best way, the one I'm using most at the moment is actually YouTube. I'm on there all the time, okay. I'm, I'm pretty much addicted. So a comment on YouTube, I think you can message me through there as well if you go to About section on YouTube. Uh, catch me on there. Failing that, you can catch me on Facebook as well, Cayman Griffiths. You can catch me on Instagram, Cayman Griffiths. Oh, sorry, The Cayman Show. Uh, you can catch me, The Cayman Show, or Cayman Griffiths on Twitter also. But I, I am on, on them all. I get notifications. So do reach out, guys. It'll be uh, good to talk. Oh, just one last thing. Uh, who's your next guest? 
Um, oh. my next guest. Uh, ah, that's right. he never tells. He never. You tells. never know. You never know. But uh, but uh, my last guest was a gentleman mm. by the name of Charlie Fat. Oh, who Charlie some of you might Fat, know. He was yeah. he was a, a referee. He's, he's one of your natives. He was a referee. He was over here in the UK in Merthyr Tidville for a time. He wrestled with me on it. Uh, sorry, he refereed several of my matches on NWA UK Hammerlock. Became a great friend of mine. And I just want to give a shout out to Charlie Fat over there, if I may, before we wrap up. He's got a fantastic show on this very uh, station called Sounds Like Teen Spirit. It's 90s uh, hits, memories, rarities. I don't know where he gets them from, but he gets them. <laughs> and, and he also chats all about it. It's a, it's a great time. Thank you so much, The Cayman. Hey, thank you very much for having me. It's been a pleasure. It's been fun. And if you notice, from start to end, my voice has just started to come back as well. Just needed a little exercise. That's all it was. That's it. <laughs> <Thanks>. <laughs> Fantastic.